Hello and welcome to my channel. You know, no, I'm not doing this figure today. It's a beautiful one though, isn't it? Uh, I'll be doing this sometime next month with Scott Brown. But I will be doing something that's related to this. This is actually from a miniseries by, I think, was it CBS, ABC? I don't remember. But in the old days, uh, television companies would put together a miniseries. And these miniseries could go two, three days, maybe even a couple of weeks. I remember watching uh, The Holocaust and Roots, and those were extended uh, miniseries. And I think they came back uh, year after year. So it's kind of like a trend with these television companies to put together a miniseries from a novel or um, maybe a group of novels. And uh, this actually is one of my favorite, well, yeah, I'd say one of my favorite miniseries that came out on TV, Salem's Lot. As a kid, it terrified me. And, and I think it did so because there were depictions of child vampires. And if you haven't seen the, the miniseries, I highly recommend it. You know, there's this one uh, scene where one of the main characters is confronted by a, a friend, a childhood friend, at his window who's a vampire. And boy, um, you know, even today that, that scene is terrifying. So if you haven't seen Salem's Lot, I highly recommend it. But as I said before, I'm not doing this figure, but I am doing the main character from this film or miniseries, Ben Mears. Now, yeah, you'll recognize his head. This actually comes from uh, Hutch Head from Mego. But you know what? I don't have a Hutch, but I did reach out to a Mego buddy of mine, and he was kind enough to send this head, along with a couple of other ones, so that uh, I could complete this project. So I wanted to put a shout out there. I don't know if he wants me releasing his name on, on, um, on the video, but it'll probably pop up in the comments if he does say something. So today, I'm gonna to make a copy of this head, the Ben Mears character, using a new product that I found. You know, because I, I kind of put this off, and so I needed something immediately. I couldn't go out to the store. I mean, I couldn't um, order it online, so I had to go out to a, a local store. And I found these products at my local uh, Hobby Lobby. And I'm gonna give them a shot today. This is the mold making material, and this is the, uh, the, the resin casting material. So I'm hoping that together, I can make a copy of this head and get the original back to my Mego pal. So, hope you stay tuned. It should be informative. Um, it says it won't take too long. I think this um, this sets in like an hour or something. Oh, full cure, 24 hours. So it might take a little bit of time. But the demold time's 30 minutes. Full cure, 24 hours. Uh, I'm not gonna use the entire 24 hours. I think I'm gonna probably try, try to pull it out in a couple of hours. And then this stuff is supposed to, to cast in like 10 minutes. I'm, I'm gonna give it maybe an hour. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix these things together and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna create a copy of this head so I can use them for my Ben Mears project. So I hope you stay tuned. All right, before you get started, I guess it's important to have all your materials laid out. Here I have two bathroom cups and, and they're just like little bathroom cups. I think I got these at the dollar store. I don't remember, maybe, maybe Walmart. But they're those little paper bathroom cups. Um, I've got a couple of those filled with water. Now, for obvious reasons, I'm using two heads. So this process that I'm, I'm gonna show you today works with two heads. It doesn't really matter as long as you get equal parts of the mold maker material into your mixing cup. And I have my mixing cup here, and I have a, um, uh, like a tongue depressor in there to kind of stir it up. I also have a hot glue gun, and I'm gonna go over why I have that in just a moment and Sharpie. So let's start with a hot glue gun. I'm gonna put Starsky in the blue one. So I'm simply gonna just put some glue on the base of his head. And then I'm gonna stick him into the cup. Make sure that you get away, uh, get any little strings out of the way. And then just kind of center him in there. nice and centered and you can see why I use these uh, bathroom cups they're like the perfect size okay. and now I'm gonna do hutch or uh, my Ben mirrors and again make sure that you get all those little flyaways taken care of and center them right in the middle of your cup 
So, those guys are taken care of. Let me unplug my glue gun and get it out of the way. Now I'm going to take my water and I'm going to use my, my empty cup here and I'm going to pour in an equal amount of water to what's going to be in the mold maker. Now I'll probably, you know, since I have these heads in there displacing some of the volume, I may have um, extra material, you know, but it's better to have extra material than not enough material because if you don't have enough material, it's going to be hard to mix and you won't have a, a really decent result. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark a line where the water meets the cup. And then I'm going to take my second cup and I'm going to pour it in. And I'm going to mark that. Okay. Um, I'm going to use a different cup just because um, I have to dry that one out. I should put a little bit below. Okay. So now I have my volume. And now I'm going to get out my um, mixing material and I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to put it into this cup. All right, let's go over the features that are on the box. Amazing mold maker, features and benefits. Easy to use, fast demolding time, creates highly detailed molds, FDA compliant, and then it compares it to a variety of other products like uh, mold putty, which I've never used, mold rubber, never used. So it says one, uh, less than a half an hour of, of demold time. I mean, less than one hour of demold time. Now, I don't know what that means. I mean, I guess if you're in a hurry, you can pull it out in an hour. I don't know if I want to try that. I'll probably leave it in there for maybe two. It's food safe, 3D compatible test. I don't know what that means. Captures high detail. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that it uh, pretty much identically replicates those heads. And I'm gonna add, I don't know, I'm going to add the side A first just because A comes before B. And I'm going to put it into my cup here. And I'm going to pour it into that line. That's a lot of material. I think maybe I might have enough for three. I'm gonna I'm gonna get another head ready just in case. Cause I've, ne I've never really worked with this stuff. I don't know. Okay, so that's my first bit. And let me go ahead and get the second part, the part B. And it's amazing that I was able to find this over at my uh, my local Hobby Lobby. And now I'm going to mix it up. Yeah, get yourself a big tongue depressor. I mean, it'll make your life a lot easier. It'll mix it more thoroughly, I think. Scrape the edges of the wall. Try to get it off the floor. I think that's pretty well mixed. Again, off the walls, off the floor of the, the cup. Last one. my napkin here. I'm going to just drop it on that. And wish me luck. Here we go. I'm going to cover Ben Mears first. Okay, I've got it about halfway done. I'm going to tilt him. Just make sure there's no air bubbles. See, I'm getting some air bubbles from somewhere. So by rolling it, maybe that'll help. <clears throat> One more air bubble right there. I'm gonna do it until I stop getting air bubbles. There's another one. Where are these air bubbles coming from? OK, 
Okay, now to top them off. I may fill it up to the top. All right, here we go, Starsky. You can already tell that my uh, Ben Mears is gonna be doing double duty, right? Maybe I can find a Huggy Bear out there. Now this shouldn't damage the, the paint job. Everything should be fine. I, I've done this before on uh, Mego heads, you know, retired ones. And I haven't had any problems with uh, it peeling up the paint. I guess if the paint is really, really old and flaky, you might have a problem. But other than that, I can't see that happening. Boy, it looks like those heads don't take up a lot of volume. Look at this. Well, maybe it's because I, I did bring it down just a tad, but equally, right? So maybe that's why it's not going, it's, you know, overflowing. Oh, that's pretty good. I didn't have a lot of material left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let these sit for a bit. I got a mess to clean up. I'm gonna let these sit for a bit. I think I'm gonna come back and check them out in about two or three hours. Just give it plenty of time to, to set. Even though it says it sets or you can demold in, in less than an hour. I'm still gonna give it a couple hours, maybe two or three. So I'll be back. Let's go ahead and uh, open Starsky first. It's been about two and a half hours, so it's not a full cure, but it should be well within the time frame that they have on the box. So this is after uh, about a two, not a, it's not completely two and a half, like um, maybe two hours, 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and pop him out and see how he does. You know what, I might have to get some pliers. I'll be right back. All right, Starsky's head's out. Now let me try Hutch and my Ben Mears. It's like Christmas. All right, now Hutch is out, Starsky's out. I'm gonna go ahead and label these and I'm gonna use the next part of my mold making kit. Uh, this right here, the casting resin to go ahead and cast a couple of heads. Let me get this set up. Okay, this also has a two-step process. I'm gonna start with part A first. And it comes with these little cups. I'm gonna see if I can salvage them. I'm gonna try to, um, I'm not gonna mix them together. I'm gonna try to uh, wipe them down with that paper towel right there. And hopefully, I can keep the cups. So, I'm just gonna take some part A and pour it into this cup. I'm gonna fill it up to 30 milliliters. Okay, so I've got that one there. And then I'm gonna to go to part B. And I'm gonna fill this one up to um, 30 as well. So you know what, if you're looking for a um, quick and easy way to, to cast heads, so far this is turning out to be a pretty um, quick method. We'll see how well it does. When we're done, okay, a little bit more. Okay, oh, you know what? Um, before I mix these, I'm gonna do something real quick. You know, it doesn't hurt to have an extra mold laying around. I've got this, this is actually my neck stems. I've got three different types of neck stems in here. And then I've got a little uh, Sulu that I, maybe I need another copy of. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna see how much is left after I'm done mixing them and pouring them into that. 
Uh, if it's a lot, I'll do a sulu head. If not, I'll probably do this. So I'm going to pour in the first part. Into my cup. Try to get it all out. Okay. Now I'm going to pour my second part in there. And you'll see a chemical reaction takes place almost immediately. So let me get this stirred up. Just got a little stirring straw right here. And I got my Starsky and Hutch. You know, let me make sure this is well mixed. At about halfway, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to roll it just so it gets into all the different um, nooks and crannies. It's getting kind of hot. Looks like I'm going to barely make it. I might not have any left over. Oh, I forgot to, to roll Starsky. Give it a couple of squeezes. And I think I have enough for uh, some ne neck plugs. Okay, just a little left. Probably not enough for anything. So it says that uh, it should be ready in about 10 minutes. Let's come back and check it in 10 minutes because it should change color to something that looks like a white. Well, it hasn't even been five minutes and they've already turned white and they're starting to foam. So um, I'm going to give it a full hour to, uh, to set and I'm going to come back and, and uh, release them from the mold. I actually had enough to, to fill up Sulu as well. I thought I'd just pour in there and see how much I got. I had enough to fill that up. So I'll be able to pull out uh, three heads and my uh, neck stems from that mixture. Okay, it's been about an hour, so let's take a look at these. Let's open this one first. This is my... Um, my neck plugs. I mean, there's not a lot of detail there. You're not going to see anything, but looks like they came out really well. Let's try Sulu. Boy, he's stuck. Wow, oh, that looks pretty good. Awesome. All right, let's see. Oh, gosh, the names are covered. Oh, of course. <laughs> let's see, I think this was Starsky. So let's try Starsky. Wow, look at that. Wow, he came out great. Perfect, look at that. Wow. All right, now for the final one. Let's see how Hedge came out. Uh-oh. Where'd that yellow come from? That is strange, isn't it? Look, because, I mean, his head looks the same as what it was before. There was um, a little bit of, um, you know, I guess fading in the paint. But, whoa, what happened here? That is so strange. It looks like it didn't affect the sculpt. 
Hmm. I'm gonna have to try another one and see what happens. I'm gonna get this guy prime though. I'm gonna get him painted. It doesn't look like um, it doesn't look like it's gonna interfere with the, the sculpt itself. So let me get him primed and, and we'll see how it looks. You know, the only thing I can figure is that I didn't wash his head. So um, I guess that's a good tip is to wash the head before you put it into the, the mold. That way you'll get rid of any sort of like, I guess, residue that's on there. I'm gonna go ahead and paint him up anyway. I think I'm gonna be doing another um, mold of him, but you know, I'll get this guy painted up and see how he looks. I'm gonna start with his Andre dust base for his hair. Because I know his hair is blonde, but I'm going to give it kind of like a dirty blonde. For the base color, anyway. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use some uh, yellows and a wash. And I'm also going to use a parchment color to kind of like highlight it. But I think this is a good uh, kind of dirty blonde paint to start with. Yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Look at that. It's just like, um, I don't know, it's just the Starsky head. Just beautiful. Look at that. Look at the detail. I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe that the hutch was like kind of dusty or something. You know, these guys have been around for what, 50 years? trying to remember. I don't think I had a Starsky and Hutch. I might have though. I'll have to ask my sister. I don't remember if I did or not. I did like Starsky and Hutch though. I probably did. It's just it's not too memorable for whatever reason. But now I have a set. I'm excited about that. And you know that um, that mold material is so inexpensive. Well, I mean, not in inexpensive in, in, I guess if you're, what am I trying to say? You know, I've bought mold material before that was very, very pricey. I'd spent like 80 bucks on mold material. So to spend like, you know, like close to like 40 on it, it's just, um, <laughs> It's a welcomed relief for me anyway, especially with prices going up the way they are. And it looks like it's working out pretty well. I mean, I know that because I have those control pieces. You know, I have uh, the Starsky and then I have the, uh, um, my Sulu. It came out really well too. Oh, it looks like there's a little divot in his lip. I'll take care of that. The casting itself came out well. Let me get my water. Be right back. Yeah, I got so excited about this guy. I got my my water and my uh, paper towel over there. Yeah, I'm just a little disappointed in the in the um, the detail. I will resculpt this. I mean, not resculpt him. I will uh, recopy him. And make a new print. But I'm just not happy with this. Take a look at his uh, face now. For his face, I think I'm going to use um, layered Kislev flesh. And I'm just going to put that, at least the first layer, down. And then I'll move it around uh, by his hair so I can establish that hairline. Okay, yeah, as far as painting, this um, this material is just drinking up the paint. You know, the uh, the wash, I mean, the wash, the, uh, the base coat of the white, it worked out really well. I think this is, I have two uh, Kislev fleshes. One is kind of watery, because I put this, uh, this thinner in there, 
and I didn't know how much thinner to put in. And so I think I put a little too much. But I have another one that's uh, kind of like full strength that I haven't messed with. And so uh, on these areas where I have to touch up around the, the hair, I'll use that one. I'm just excited to have Starsky and Hutch, honestly. Yeah, I wanted to thank uh, my amigo buddy. I guess I can just call him Jim. There's a lot of Jims out there. My son's a Jim. Just thank him for this guy. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Let me grab my other uh, Kislev Flesh. Okay, I've got my uh, full strength here. You'll see it's it's a lot thicker and it's a lot darker. So I'm gonna go in and just take care of these detailed areas that I wasn't able to get. And then also uh, cover these areas where I got a little too much of that sandry dust into the flesh. Especially here on this sideburn. Okay, let me my other brush, finish them off. Looks like this is going to be a nice little second coat too. And then I'll come back and I'll do the eyes. It's actually starting to look like I'm I was a little worried there for a while. See what I mean? Pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let him dry off. And, uh, ooh, hang on, I gotta cover that back there. And then we'll take care of the eyes. The eyes are the hard part. Hopefully they won't be too difficult. Oh, he's coming along nicely, look at that. I'm gonna let him dry though. You know, while that's drying, I have to see how this is gonna work with the uh, dry brush. I was afraid that that detail got lost. Hmm, it's not looking too bad. You know, I think this is going to work. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna let them dry now. Okay, now to get the black in the eyes, I'm just gonna use the tip of a very fine brush, small tip brush, and I'm gonna push into the top part of his eye. And I'm just trying to get a lid kind of effect. I mean, if you cover the whole eye, I don't think that's a problem. But what I'm trying to do is just get on the upper lid. Kind of like that. Okay, now the eyebrows. I'm going to use the same brush. So I'm going to have to wipe this off, clean it off. And I'm going to use my Zandri dust. If you mess up, you can always go back and you can um, you can add uh, some more flesh to that to kind of, I guess, trim them up a little bit. Those those look terrible. <laughs> you 
you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna draw them. I was trying to follow the little, uh, I guess the, the contours there. So I'm just gonna draw them. I'm just gonna go like a little loop and then down. And then I'll come back with my flesh paint and fix that. Okay, what else can I do? Oh, let me try my wash. I'm gonna dilute this. And I'm gonna go over the, uh, the hair. Looks like it might be a little too yellow. And this wash I'm using is not really a wash, it's called a contrast paint, but they're usually a little watery, uh, watery, <laughs> watery, waterier than the regular paints. So you can use them as washes, kind of. They just dilute them a little bit. Okay, so that's that. I'll try dabbing it. So I can keep some of that um, that highlighted antique, and then the last step, I think I'm going to do a real fine dry brush gold. Okay, I'm going to try the eyes. I've got my antique parchment. I'm going to use that for my eyes as well. And I'm just going to paint the the whites of the eyes and try to keep that. Um, that upper lid intact. If you guys know of an easier way to paint eyes, please let me know. This is kind of nerve wracking. And I always mess it up. I don't know, I just, um, I just always kind of like do something up. See, I think in this case, I just went a little too far with that black into his nose. And the eyes just don't look even. Okay, let me go ahead and fix his eyebrows while I'm here. Let's see, I'm gonna need my full strength paint for that. I think it's this one. Nope, that's my watery one. I'll show you what I mean about the eyebrows. I'm just going to trace them out underneath the brow and cover the parts that I don't want. See what I mean? And then just thin this one out over here on the side. It looks a lot better. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. Just basically kind of trimming them, I guess. Oops, I went a little too far with that one. Maybe I can fix it. Okay, let me erase that. Try again. better. I may have to go back and do some touch-up. Where's my blue paint? I have this blue paint for the eyes. It's called um, it's Contrast Space Wolves Gray. And I'm going to drop this into um, the whites. 
and I'm gonna add a black, um, I guess, pupil at the end. So I just push these into the center of the eye and push up towards the top. Hopefully I get a pretty decent eye. Okay, I'm gonna try to make the same sort of eye over here. The middle of the eye pushing up into the lid. And if I'm lucky, they should match. Okay. I think I'm gonna let those dry and I'm gonna to try to touch up that eyebrow. I don't know if I'm happy with that hair. I'm gonna try some golden yellow on there. A little dry brush. Just to see if I can bring out more of um, like a golden color. Still looks yellow. I guess his hair was yellow. I'm gonna try some uh, some metallic gold and see if that works. Got some right here. <clears throat> uh, metallic. And this is just gonna be a fine dry brushing. I'm gonna try to take off as much of the paint as I can. Because I want it to be shiny, but I don't want it to be metal looking. If that makes any sense. Yeah, look at that. I can really see the lack, of, well, the, the problems with the detail here in his hair. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal because, you know, it's hair anyway and it's not going to be smooth. But I definitely think I'm going to have to, um, well, I'm definitely going to recast this guy. Okay. Yeah, you can see I fixed that eyebrow. Let me go ahead and put the, the black in the pupils and see what that does for his eyes. And I think I'm going to add a little fleck of white, too. There's some bright white in here somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, I found a little blue-gray. I'm going to use that just kind of like to highlight the sides of the eyes. Put some dots in there. I'm going to have to go back and do the pupils. Let me go back and do the pupil real quick. I don't even think I need that um, that white flash. Now I'm going to do the um, the lips underneath the lids, and then maybe do a quick 
dry brushing over his face or, or either that or do a wash. Let's see, what am I looking for? This is what I use for my lips, uh, Layer Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm going to put that underneath his eyes, maybe around his eyes too. Any place I want a darker shade of color for his flesh. Really works well for his lips. All right, now underneath his eyes. I might as well go above them too. Okay, and I'm going to do a little wash, let's see, I've got this right here, this Contrast Gilliman Flesh, and I'm going to water this down quite a bit, and I'm just going to push it into, uh, you know, like maybe under his nose, around his laugh lines, This is brown. Pretty much like David Soul, I would say. Let me find the uh, original head. <clears throat> yeah, so not too bad. I am going to get this guy dressed. Um, gosh, I just. Here, let me get some. I have this flesh tone here it's like layered layered flayed one flesh I'm gonna try to um, it's too it's too light maybe it's just that white paint that I use the uh, I mean the uh, watery flesh tones but it looks like there's some splotching here Let's see if I can get that taken care of Yeah, I think he's okay. I definitely need to recast him though. Let me go ahead and get him dressed up. Uh, I think I'm gonna spray him with my matte clear enamel and uh, see what he looks like when he's dressed up. I'll be back. Well, they sure do look great together. I'm not entirely happy with this transfer. You know, it, it, um, it just lacked the detail of the original. I know it's not the material, because the Starsky head, look at that, it's just a perfect copy. So I know it's not the materials, you know? So I'm just gonna go ahead and recast uh, this Hutch head and uh, of course repaint it. So I'll have it ready when we do our, our live stream for the uh, Kurt Barlow. As I said, I'm gonna be doing that sometime in October with, with Scott Brown and maybe J Spy. But the materials that I use to make the copy, I think are a winner. It's about, almost half as much as what I was spending on my old stuff and I don't have to wait overnight. I mean, I can have a head casted in, you know, just a few hours instead of waiting, you know, um, overnight like half a day. You know, I can I can have a head ready and I, I can start painting, which is proof because I, I got this guy casted and painted, you know, within a few hours. So those are winners. Uh, you know what? It was just basic stuff. I, all I had to do was just wash this head. I think there was some dust on there or something. I just missed it. And uh, when you're casting, just follow basic procedures. You know, just just rinse off the head. Maybe you know, wash it with a little soap and water, and you can avoid the the problem that I had. So, I'm going to recast that guy. I'm happy with the materials I have. I think 
the outfit that I've chosen for Ben Mears is going to work out really well. I'm still working on the outfit for Kurt Barlow, but I hope you join us during our live stream, stream in October. Well, until then, well, I'll probably see you next week too, but uh, until next time, you guys stay safe, be cool, and I will see you all really, really soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.